All right, uh, we're going to continue our reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Now, verses 10 through 18. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him know. God bless this reading for today. Grant us insight into your word and how it might apply to our lives. Help us, Lord, to become more faithful disciples this day. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, by our church calendars, today is the 10th day of the 12 days of Christmas. The 12 days of Christmas ends on Epiphany on January the 6th, which is Wednesday this year. By our secular calendars, today is the third day of the year 2016. Almost everyone in the world celebrates January 1st as the first day of the new year. New Year's is as close to a universal holiday that there is. We human beings, we like to divide things up and categorize them and organize them. You know, a bunch of uh, individual years gets put together into tens. We call them decades. And then we take those decades into tens and we call them a century. And then we take those ten centuries and we call them a millennium. Well, 15 years ago, we crossed the milestones of a decade, a century, and a millennium. And many people thought that the world was going to end when the third millennium began. People thought that God like that nice round number of the, of the millennium, and decided, well, this is a good time to end the world. Well, but unless uh, you and I somehow missed it, you know, and we're, we're the leftovers, um, the world did not end. Uh, nor did it end in 2012, when the Mayan calendar ended on one of its major cycles. Anyway, God has God's own timetable for things. And we will not, and God will not be coerced, God will not be bargained with, God will not be bribed to change it. God is not under our control. God is beholden, is not beholden to any human calculations or swayed by any human reasoning. God has a plan and purpose, which God controls the time and place of what God desires to happen. We are all subject to God's time. We have the choice of following God's lead and getting with God's program or choosing to go our own way and follow the dictates of our egos. We decide every day and many times a day who is the boss of our lives, God or our egos. You know, in God's own time and for God's own purpose, the universe was created. In God's own time and for God's own purpose, the word of God became flesh and lived among us to save us from ourselves, to save us from our own limited vision, our own limited capacity to love and show compassion, and our own limited ability to do good. God sees the big picture. God's love is unconditional. And God empowers us to do good. Last month we saw and heard the stories of Christ's birth from the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Mark's gospel starts with a full-grown Jesus visiting an adult John the Baptist at the Jordan River. Well, what about John's gospel? 
Well, you won't find Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem. You won't find angels or shepherds or wise men from the east in John's gospel. John puts the birth of Jesus in a cosmic context. John tells us that Jesus is the word of God who was with God and is God from the beginning of the universe. In fact, Jesus as the word of God was how the universe was created. The first recorded, of, the first recorded words of God were, let there be light. Yes. The whole universe and everything in it was created through the word of God. John's gospel goes on to celebrate that God is the source of all life and uh, that the word of God brought life into existence. John 1.4 says that in the word was life and that life was the light of all people. In the darkness of that primordial chaos, when God created space and time, God brought light into existence and the darkness did not overcome it. And with the light came life. John tells us that the light of God is more powerful than darkness and that life is stronger than death. Light and life are stronger than darkness and death, which also include not just the physical darkness and death of the universe, but also the spiritual darkness and death that plagues every sentient life. Chaos and emptiness cannot destroy or vanquish the light and life that Christ brings. So in the fullness of time, the eternal word of God became flesh in the form of Jesus the Christ. The words that Jesus spoke were the words of God. They were the words of light and life. The very words of creation itself. Jesus spoke to us in grace and truth of eternal things. The words of Jesus are creative and therefore they are transformative. But before Jesus spoke to us in grace and truth, God sent someone to announce the coming of the Christ. John the Baptist was not the light, but he was sent to witness to the light. And the light of God came into the world, but John's gospel says the world did not know him, even though he had created the world. People did not know Christ because they were used to the darkness and preferred the shadows rather than the light. Christ the light came to God's chosen people, but they did not accept him. The people who you would figure would be closest to God and perceive God's ways most readily, did not. This fact is a warning to us who believe that we are close to God. Perhaps we have become accustomed to the shadows as well. But Christ is the light of the world. He came for all people. And from among all peoples of the earth, there are those who received him and believed in him. And those who believed in Christ were given the power to become children of God. Because being a child of God is not something that one can have by physical birth or by willpower or a collection of good deeds. One becomes a child of God by birth in the spirit and the will of God. Being a child of God comes from a transformation of the heart. On Christmas God sought to change our hearts by becoming human and living as one of us. God is not aloof. God is not remote. But rather, God knew our human life intimately and personally. God loves the world so much that God enters fully into human pain and joy, taste and sensation. God came to bridge the gap between people and God. It was a gap which we humans did not have the power or ability to cross. But God has the power and ability and the desire to bridge the gap so that we can connect with God once more. Christmas is God reaching out to us across the darkness and void to connect with us. And in chapter 1 of John's Gospel, we are told that John the Baptist testified to God's arrival among us. The Baptist declares that from his fullness, we have received grace upon grace. In Christ, the fullness of God's presence was among us, and we received the grace of God's presence with us. When Christ came, we received grace and truth 
by the very presence of God. Not everyone saw Jesus and recognized that God was among them. Not everyone who heard Jesus speak the word of God recognized the grace and truth of his words. Oftentimes, when people live in shadows, they become blinded by the light. They preferred the darkness they knew rather than the light that they did not know. Jesus spoke in grace and truth, but people did not recognize it because they were used to others seeking to take advantage of them or deceive them. Jesus brings God's word of grace. Jesus brings the word that God cares about us, that God loves us, that God forgives us, that God wants to help us, that God wants to be close and to make us a life better for all of us. But Jesus also brings God's word of truth. It is the truth about God's love and forgiveness, but it is also a word of harsh reality of all the dark places in our lives. God can reveal the truth of our motives and intentions and bring us to shame as we realize that we are not as noble as we might have thought we were. The light of truth is oftentimes hard to receive, so that is why God also speaks a word of grace to us. God's word of grace tells us that even though our motives, intentions, and deeds may not be often noble, God still loves us and forgives us so that we might try to do better another time. Many of us need a word of grace and truth as we begin the new year. I think many of you have probably made New Year's resolutions to improve your lives and the lives of those around you. There is a whole myriad of resolutions that... uh, you all have probably made, but I suspect for many of you the resolutions uh, that you have made for this New Year's are probably the same ones you made last year, and for some of you probably the same for the last 10 years or more. When trying to improve our lives by improving ourselves, it is most often a difficult process. Most New Year's resolutions include eating better, exercising, and quitting smoking. There is a reason why you are a couch potato and do not eat healthy foods and exercise. Yet if you smoke, there's a reason why you only quit for a short time and you go back to it. We need to give ourselves grace for our past failures. We need to forgive ourselves for not being able to do the changes we have wanted to make. And if God can forgive us for all that we have done wrong in life, then we should be able to forgive ourselves to try again. But keep in mind that this grace exists side by side with the harsh reality of truth. In order to make any real change in our lives, we need both truth and grace. We need to face the truth about ourselves and the real reasons we sit on the couch or keep puffing away. But then we also need the grace to forgive ourselves to try again. And as we enter this new year, let us remember that God created the universe of which we are a small part. God is the source of our lives. God sent Christ to give us words of grace and truth to help us to live better lives, to make a better world. We must be watchful, though, because sometimes we miss the light. We must remember that we are born of God's Spirit and we are children of God. And remember that God bestows grace upon grace to us. So, may you have a grace-filled new year. Grace and peace to you all this year. Amen.